Today I'm going to show you everything that you need to know in order to use Flex. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So if you're watching this video right after I released it, that means that FL Studio version 20.5 has just been released and along with it Flex has finally come out. So I figured I'd use this opportunity to just go ahead and do a walkthrough tutorial of this entire plugin and show you everything that you need to know about it. There are certain things I could talk about about my opinion of this plugin and stuff like that. I don't really want to get into that in this video, I'm going to keep it all strictly how to use this plugin. So having said that, let's get straight into it. So Flex is kind of a unique synth to FL Studio because you can't actually make your own sounds from scratch. It's kind of similar to Nexus in that way. Basically, they've reached out to various sound designers who have created different sample packs or expansion packs. And then we have all these presets which we can browse through and choose from. And then we can actually tweak those presets using macro controls and filters and envelopes and delay and reverb and various other things in this plugin. But we just can't create our own sounds from scratch. So when we first open up the plugin, it should look something like this. Uh, you may have the option to download some of these packs over here. So go ahead and do that. It shouldn't take more than a few seconds. And then once those are downloaded, we can scroll through different packs and start to kind of just listen to some of the presets and hear what we have. We do have the ability to favorite presets that we like. So I definitely recommend doing that. Now, while you're browsing, we do have the ability to search for stuff down here, which is kind of cool. And then we also have a tags feature. This can definitely come in handy if you're looking for like a specific sound, like a bass or something like that. We could go to all and then it'll show us all the bases that we have access to so far in our library. So that can definitely be a nice little feature to utilize. Now we also have the ability to purchase some sample packs down here. Right now we just have two for sale. They are going to be releasing many more sample packs for free and also to purchase coming up very soon. So chances are, depending on when you're watching this video, I'm sure the synth will have a lot more sample packs or expansion packs to choose from. I haven't bought these sample packs yet. Uh, I don't know if I necessarily plan to. So if you have purchased these expansion packs, let everyone know in the comments down below what you think about these so people can get an idea of what to expect. So just like many newer FL Studio plugins that have come out, uh, we do have the ability to resize this plugin by dragging from this little corner down here. So you can make that bigger if you'd like. We can also change the theme of this plugin. Uh, so we have a few different skins to choose from. If you click this flex button here, uh, go down to theme and then we have four different themes which we can choose from. Now we can also just go up to here where it says flex and just double click and scroll through the themes that way too. So depending on what theme you like, you can change that. Now also if we go down here to these little buttons, we can detach these things from each other if we wanted to by by clicking that. And then also another little cool feature of this plugin is that we have the ability to lock any of these parameters that we want to, whether it be envelope filter, any one of these you can lock. And basically what that'll do is if we move these to a certain point and then we were to switch presets, it's gonna maintain that, that position where we put them in. So that's another nice kind of feature of this plugin. All right, so moving on to our analysis section here. So this is our visualizer and we have four different visualizers to choose from here. So by default, we have our oscilloscope we also have a spectrum view. We also have a vector scope, which shows us the stereo image of the sound. And then we also have our spectrograph. Uh, so that's kind of a cool little feature to include in this plugin. So moving on to our macros, uh, our macros are actually assigned by whoever created this specific preset or patch. So they have the ability to set different macros depending on what sound they've done. So as you scroll through different presets here, you'll notice that these sort of change. And uh, this is going to be just a really easy way for us to uh, kind of tweak the sound and get the sound that we're going for. These are all pretty self-explanatory. So you shouldn't have too much issues trying to figure out, you know, what exactly they're doing. And if for some reason you don't know what it means, then you can kind of just, you know, listen to it and see what it does. So we also have a little section here where we can control the pitch and we have these knobs which allow us to move things up one semitone at a time. And then of course we can also just drag this. All right, so next we have our filter section. Uh, it's a very basic filter section. We basically have a cutoff knob, we have a resonance knob, and then we have an envelope amount knob, which interacts with this uh, first filter envelope section here. So our cutoff knob is going to control the amount of frequencies that we're filtering out. So in this sound, of course we have a resonance knob. Our envelope amount knob uh, kind of acts in a similar way to the cutoff knob, but it also interacts with this filter envelope here. So similar to that, but then 
it allows us to mess with this, whereas the, the regular cutoff doesn't really work with the envelope in the same way. So we could actually make a pluck by using this filter envelope here. I don't wanna to talk too much about ADSR. We also have a hold option here as well, but basically attack, hold, decay, sustain, release is what these letters stand for. If you guys are interested in learning more about this, check out my introduction to synthesis and sound design series, which I have right here on this channel. And I'll be sure to leave a link on the screen right now if you guys wanna check that out. So we also have just a regular volume envelope and this envelope works separately from the filter. So this just controls the ADSR of the whole plugin. So moving on to our lower section down here of our synth, we have a master filter, we have a delay, we have a reverb, a limiter, and then we have an output volume here. So you may notice that we do have the ability to bypass all of these particular features of the synth just by clicking this button here. So if we want to get rid of a particular one of these, it's very easy to do that. Now our master filter works similar to our regular filter, which we talked about. The big difference is that we actually have the ability to choose between a bunch of different filter types here. And if you're familiar with sound design and synthesis, uh, these filter types are going to look pretty familiar to you. All of them are pretty standard, but we do have a, a pretty large amount of filters to choose from, which is pretty cool. Uh, just to kind of give you a brief sort of, I guess, summary of how filters work. Um, one of the more standard filters that you're going to use for most sounds is a low pass filter. And basically what this means is that uh, we're allowing all the lower frequencies to pass through. And these different numbers next to it have to do with the slope of that particular filter. So you can think of this in terms of like how an EQ looks when you're cutting off various frequencies. So our low pass 24 is going to have our steepest slope going down this way. And it's going to basically cut off the most frequencies. And then the six would be the opposite of that. It's going to be allowing us to pass more or higher information through that filter. So our high pass filter is obviously doing the exact opposite thing. Uh, we have a band pass, which is basically passing us a band, low shelf, high shelf, notch filter. So again, I don't wanna to spend too much time just talking about filters the whole time, uh, but I do urge you to kind of experiment with some of the different filter types and you should be able to hear kind of what the cutoff does. All right, so moving on to our delay section here. Uh, the delay section is actually modeled after the Fruity Delay 3. So if you're interested in learning about the Fruity Delay 3, you don't know about it. Uh, I did recently do a video on that, so check that out. But basically our mix knob is going to control how loud the delay is. So chances are our uh, mix knob will probably be what's linked to this macro control up here. Now our time of course controls how fast or slow the delay kicks in. Our feedback controls how long the delay lasts. Our color is basically a filter. So if we go to the left, we're low passing the frequencies. And to the right, we're high passing. And you can really hear it on uh, some of these other sounds. And then our delay mod is going to control the pitch of the delay. Now we also have the ability to switch between some different types of delay here. So we have fake stereo, we have true stereo, and we have ping pong delay. All right, so our reverb section is also just a standard reverb. Uh, we have our size, which controls how big the room sounds of the reverb. We have our decay, which controls how fast the reverb actually decays. We have our mix, which of course is uh, linked to our macro control here. In this case, it's opposite. Now our color knob is supposed to adjust like damping in the higher frequencies of the decay. You can kind of hear it. It's a little bit harder to hear. Now our reverb mod is supposed to modulate the reverb in a certain way where it like breaks up the metallic aspect. So if we bring it all the way over here, it's supposed to have more of like a natural reverb sound. And then if we bring it all the way over here, it's gonna sound almost a little bit detuned. It's a little hard to hear on this particular sound. So in our limiter, we have a few different compression settings to choose from here. We can do just a regular limiter. Uh, we can do a warming, which is soft saturation. We can do a heating, which is just regular saturation. And then we can do distortion, which is distortion prone compression. Our pre-knob controls the volume 
before it's being compressed. And then our mix knob controls the volume after compression. So what do you guys think about this plugin? Is this a step in the right direction for ImageLine and FL Studio? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell notification. That's going to let you know anytime I release videos in the future. And I will see you guys in the next video.